Well, good morning, folks, and welcome to worship at Murrayfield today. As we prepare our hearts to worship God today, we begin with the words from Proverbs 3, verses 5 to 7, which say, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord, and turn away from evil. So let us now in faith and praise join in worshipping our majestic and wonderful God together. Will you join me now in prayer? Let's pray. Creator God, our loving Heavenly Father, we lift your name up in our praise as we acknowledge that you are Lord of all and that creation itself declares your glory. We thank you for the beauty of the world around us in all of its complexity and all its wonder. At this time of the year, as we begin to see the shoots of new life and growth, we thank you for your continuing, unfailing love to us, and that you provide all that sustains and enriches our lives. With the psalmist, we proclaim how great are your works, Lord, how profound your thoughts. Your glory and might truly are beyond us to tell, and yet in the heart of the humble you dwell. And so, our Father, we thank you that you know our hearts, you know us completely, you know our thoughts, our hopes, our fears, our needs. Teach us to trust in you with all of our heart. You know the love we have for you and for your Son, Jesus, and how we thank you for Jesus, 
We thank you that through Jesus' death and resurrection we are forgiven and invited to new life. Thank you that Jesus came to make it possible for us to know you as our Heavenly Father. Thank you that in him we belong to you and that nothing can separate us from you. We thank you for your spirit living within us to teach, to counsel, to guide us. Forgive us when our hearts are hard and our minds are resistant to your word. And we ask that you would make the truth of your word speak to our hearts today and that you would help us to live our lives according to your ways and that we might know your blessing and your peace. And so we ask that your name would be honoured in our lives as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Our reading today is from Psalm 37, verses 1 to 7. Fret not yourself because of evildoers. Be not envious of wrongdoers. For they will soon fade like the grass, and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord, and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way over the man who carries out evil devices. David says in verse 25, I have been young and now I'm old, which suggests to us that he is writing the psalm when he is an older man who has lived in the truth and the experience of these words during his lifetime. And in David's words, there are four principles that I think we can apply to our lives. And I want to share those with you today. So first of all, David says, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and be safe. These words, trust in the Lord, come from a life that has lived through many difficult situations and experiences and has known the goodness and blessing of God. As a young lad, David had with incredible faith and courage we know faced the Philistine champion Goliath on the battlefield and defeated him. He was chosen as king of God's people again while he was still a young man and he found himself hunted by the then king Saul who was jealous of David's fame and tried to have him killed. David also experienced crushing grief in his life as his most trusted friend, Jonathan, was killed in battle. He also lost an infant son and a grown son to death. He did, of course, show his weaker side when he committed adultery with Bathsheba and even had her husband put into a, a, a situation where he would be killed in an attempt to cover David's sin. As a political and military leader, he faced numerous challenges and when his kingdom was threatened by civil war, David even lived for a time as a refugee. As a man, he was far from perfect. He had sinned greatly before God, but he had also been forgiven greatly by God. And in all his ups and downs, and all that he'd gone through, he never lost his faith in God. And with God's help, he became a better, wiser, stronger person who knew that his security lay in his relationship with God. So when David says, trust 
in the Lord. He is calling us to trust in who God is, trusting in God's character, trusting that God is a perfectly loving Father to his children. We're trusting that, that God is holy, righteous and faithful, that God is truthful, that when he says he's going to do something, he does it. So with that in our minds, why on earth would anyone want to rely upon any other type of security rather than depending on and trusting God? So let me ask, are you trusting God now more than you did this time last year or even 10 or say 20 years ago? When we trust in God, we live with greater confidence because we know who's in control. And that affects every area of our lives. Now, the way we live outwardly flows from the way we live inwardly. And when the heart is trusting in God, we live in confidence and obedience to God. Secondly, delight yourself in the Lord, says David, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in the Lord. Make God the cause of your joy. Learn to delight in him. Make it your aim above everything else to please him. As you do that, you discover that what you desire becomes more in alignment, more in step, more in tune with what God desires. When you delight in God, you begin to say things like, Lord, what do you want? What do you want for my life? How do you want me to live my life? How can I honour you in this situation or in that circumstance? Lord, I need help in doing what you want. Delighting yourself in the Lord means that we want what God wants. We look for what makes God happy. And, and when you live with that as your desire, David says that God will hear and he'll answer that prayer of your heart and as he does so we find that we learn to leave those things which are not in our hands or not under our control confidently in the hands of the one who has all things in his control and in addition to that we, we are given a peace a peace that we will find nowhere else remember the apostle paul when he says to encouraging us to rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice, he says. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And what is the result of that? And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. God wants to bless you. And the question is this, is your heart in tune with God? Is he your delight? Thirdly, commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act. These are the words, here speaks someone who, who knows that prayer, that in prayer they can uh, commit their whole life or way to God, knowing they are held in the security of the tender yet all-powerful hands of God. The truth is we may not always understand everything that is happening. We may not understand where everything is leading, but we can commit our present and our future, our cares and our concerns, our hopes and our dreams to his love, care and goodness. So who do you trust? Who do you talk to when you have cares and concerns? Uh, God's answer may not be in the way you expect or at the time you would want, but when you commit your way to the Lord, you can be sure that God will act. He won't act when your way is, is not his way. So your responsibility is to make sure your life is in line with God's will and God's purpose. You make sure that you are living his way. 
God knows what you need. The question is, are you ready to submit himself, to submit yourself to God's will, to God's timing, uh, to God's answer? I think, uh, remember uh, of the time when Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane and he prayed, my father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Uh, in those famous words, your will be done. We see it in the Lord's Prayer, don't we? Have you, like Jesus, committed your way, your life, your will to the Lord? It's, it's the proper response to God. And it shows a heart that is right with him. Fourthly then, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Now, there, there are things I have prayed for for a, a long time before God answered my prayer. Uh, I can give you a couple of examples. When I, when I heard God calling me to ministry, I prayed for God's help as I sought to follow his call, but it took 14 years before that prayer was fully answered. At the time, uh, I will freely admit that I had moments of impatience and frustration. But, you know, looking back now, I don't look back on those years with regret. Why? Because I believe God knew what he was doing. Another prayer revolved around family. And again, that prayer took a number of years before it was answered. And when it was answered, it was answered in a way that I hadn't even thought of or considered when I began to pray about it in the first place. But here's the thing, even though we can pray for the things that lie upon our heart, and, and we should do that, there's no promise that when you pray, it will happen now, or that it will happen exactly as you want it to. Sometimes, what we are asking for is not what is best for us, or it's not in the plan that God has for our lives. Sometimes it's just a matter of timing, uh, and God is saying, yes, but not yet. Wait. I'm sure we have all had those joyful moments in life when you know, we've been waiting for something, maybe for years, for a long time, and when it happens, it just makes it even more precious. Um, being still is not always easy especially if there is something we desperately want. And to quieten the spirit, to wait upon him, to trust that God knows what answer is best, and God knows when the best time for that answer is, can be difficult. But waiting on God isn't a passive attitude. It's not something that we just all oh, we'll lay back. It's a positive action. It is living with the confident expectation that God has heard you and is answering your prayer. We wait in the company of a holy and righteous God who is a good and loving Father. And our willingness to wait is a sign that we trust God and we trust that God knows best. So here are four principles for life that we can apply. Trust in the Lord, delight yourself in him, commit your way to him, and be still and wait patiently for him. And as you do this, may God bless you. Gracious and loving Father, we thank you for the fellowship that we have in you. Inspire us in the life that we share together as a community of faith and as people who know themselves loved by you, that we may be communities where peace and love rule, seeking justice and harmony, building bridges, making connections, reaching out to others, to the glory of your holy name. Father, we pray today for our King, the Queen and the Royal Family. May your blessing rest upon King Charles as you help and strengthen him to fulfill the promises he made at his coronation. May he know your loving presence and 
draw upon your help and guidance during his reign. Bless him with the wisdom, grace, love, strength and faithfulness he will need to live a life of service to you and to his people. May he have wise counsellors around him and a readiness and a humility to hear and to act with grace, kindness, courage and faith. We pray for people in challenging places, in countries recovering from natural disasters, in places where there is war such as Ukraine and Sudan, in situations where people have been hurt by the actions of others and where people are going through tough situations in their lives, be it in terms of ill health, relationships with others or hardships that they face. May they all know your presence with them as a source of comfort, encouragement and guidance. And may that experience lift their burdens and help them to face their future with hope. We pray for all Christian communities who suffer for their faith and that you will be close to all who are persecuted because they refuse to turn away from your truth. We pray that you will increase their faith, knowing that nothing in this world may separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Saviour. Gracious God, after whom every family on earth and heaven takes its name, we thank you for deep relationships with others, for opportunities to give and to receive, to listen and hear, what others are saying, serving one another and celebrating every kindness. Especially we pray for families who are homeless, who suffer from strife and dispute, who cannot afford the necessities of life and are torn apart by drugs and alcohol. May all families know your strength and peace and share your love fully with one another. Now in the quietness we name before you anyone known to us who is burdened down with problems of any kind. Jesus, crucified, risen and ascended Lord, you intercede for us before the throne of God. Praise be to you. Holy Spirit, you help us to pray in sounds too deep for words. Praise be to you. Creator of life, you call us to life eternal. Praise be to you. These prayers we offer to the one in whom we live and move and have our being, to whom be all glory and praise, namely Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. By faith we see the hand of God In the light of creation's grand design In the lives of those who prove His faithful by faith and not by sight by faith our fathers roamed the earth with the power of his promise in their hearts of a holy city built by god's own hand a place where peace and justice
rise triumphant from the grave. By faith the church was called to go, and the power of the Spirit to the lost, to deliver captives and to preach good news in every corner. shall prevail for we know in Christ all things are possible for all who call upon his name we will stand as children of the promise we will fix our eyes on him our soul's reward till the Thank you for joining with us today. Trust in God and do what is good. Live with quiet confidence where God has placed you. Delight in God's presence and you will have all that your heart desires. Commit everything you do to God. Trust him completely and he will never let you down. Be patient. Don't worry or get upset when things don't go well. Instead, learn to rest in God's presence. For those who trust in God will have everything they need. God bless you. Amen.